Welcome to Chemistry at York. This open educational resource is a joint production of the Department of Chemistry at York College and the Department of Natural Sciences at LaGuardia Community College of the City University of New York. This video is entitled Atomic Theory Number Six, Ionic Compounds. My name is Emmanuel Chang, and today we're gonna to learn some chemistry. Hi, my name is Kelly, I like to cook and martial arts. Hi, my name is Vimal, and I like video games. Hi, my name is Tessa, and I like Corbin reactions. Hi, my name is Simon, I like rock music. Um, hi, my name is Dayala Ibrahim, I like working out and also playing sports. Today, we're going to take a closer look at ions. We introduced ions earlier in this lecture series. And today, we're gonna to look in some more detail. Ions are formed when atoms either gain or lose electrons. When an atom gains or loses one or more electrons, it goes from a neutrally, neutral species to a charged species. If electrons are lost, it becomes a positively charged cation, and if electrons are gained, it becomes a negatively charged anion. And so here we see a sodium atom. A sodium atom has 11 protons and 11 electrons. If one electron is lost, then there are now 11 protons and 10 electrons. Because protons have a charge of plus one and electrons have a charge of minus one, you put these together and you get a net charge of positive one. Similarly with a chlorine atom, except a chlorine atom is more likely to gain than to lose an electron. So if a chlorine atom gains one electron, now it has one more electron than it has protons for a net negative one charge, which gives us a negatively charged anion. So some common cations and anions, some common cations here are as follows, sodium, potassium, calcium, and so on. And some common anions are as follows. Now, important question is, how do we know what charge a cation or what charge an anion is going to have? Can we figure this out? based on the identity of the element. Is there a way to know that sodium gives a sodium plus or plus one cation, magnesium and calcium give plus two and aluminum gives plus three. Similarly, is there a way that we can know or we can figure out that chloride gives you a minus one ion, oxygen gives you a minus two ion, and nitrogen gives you a minus three ion. And in fact, there is there's a principle based on the periodic table by which we can predict the charges on most main group cations and anions. Elements in group one, the alkaline metals, tend to form plus one ions. Elements in group two tend to form plus two ions. This large group of metals over here, the transition elements, the transition metals, it can be very difficult to predict the charged, charged form that they will take as ions. But over here, group 13, which is the third main group group, um, elements would tend to form plus three ions. For, for non-metals, the noble gases tend not to form ions at all. The halogens tend to form minus one, my, the calcogens minus two, and the tictogens minus three. So basically we count in from the edges of the periodic table, negatively charged anions minus one, minus two, minus three on the non-metal side, and positively charged cations, plus one, plus two, skip over the transition metals, and plus three 
on the metal side. Most elements gain or lose enough electrons so they have the same number as the nearest noble gas. So the noble gas nearest to lithium is, which has an atomic number of three, is helium, which has an atomic number of number two. And so it will get, lose one electron. So <clears throat> it goes from three electrons to two electrons. The nearest um, noble gas to sulfur, atomic number 16, is argon, atomic number 18. So sulfur will gain two electrons to go from 16 electrons to 18 electrons. The chemical basis for this we will discuss in a further chemistry at York lecture. So we learned in a previous lecture that ionic compounds are formed by the transfer of electrons from one atom to another, forming a pair of ions that are attracted to each other. And so the sodium ion and the chloride ion, one is positively charged, one is negatively charged. <clears throat> they may come together and give us one unit of sodium chloride. Okay, so now that we know something about ions, what about ionic compounds? How do we know the formula of an ionic compound? Well, in an ionic compound, or any compound, you have electrical neutrality. That is, the total charge of the formula must be zero. Otherwise, it's not a compound. Otherwise, it's an ion. If we're looking at a compound, the total charges must add up to zero. So let's look at sodium chloride. In sodium chloride, the sodium has a charge of plus one because it's an alkali metal. And the chlorine or the chloride ion has a charge of minus one because it's a halogen. So we have plus one from the sodium, minus one from the chloride. You add plus one and negative one and you get a net charge of zero. If we consider the compound formed from mag the magnesium cation and the bromide anion, we can do a similar sort of math. So magnesium is an alkaline earth metal. It has a charge of plus two in its ionic form. Bromine is a halogen and like chlorine, it takes a charge of minus one. So if I have just, if I were to just have, pretend this two isn't here, if I were to just have one magnesium and one bromide, we'd have plus two from the magnesium, minus one from the bromide. Plus two and minus one don't give me zero. Right? Plus two and minus one, when I add them together, I get a positive one. How can I make those elements give me a total charge of zero? Well, if I have one magnesium for a charge of plus two, and then two bromide ions, each of which has a charge of negative one, then I get two plus negative two, and that gives me a total of zero. So I put a subscript two next to the bromine, which means that there are two bromide ions for every one magnesium ion. Okay. Is there a general way um, to figure this out without having to sort of solve it on the fly for different combinations of positive charges and negative charges? Well, there actually is. And we will call, call this the crossing over method. Let's look, for example, at calcium and bromine. So calcium is an alkaline earth metal. So it gets a positive charge, a, a charge of positive two, and bromine is a halogen gets a charge of negative one. So what I like to do is write these out in their ionic form. So calcium plus two and bromine minus one. Very often when we have a minus one, we don't use the number, but here I'm going to leave the number in explicitly. In order to find out the formula of calcium bromide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the superscript charges, just the number part, not the charge part, just the number part, 
not this plus or minus, and I'm going to cross them over. That is, I'm going to take this 2 and bring it down to become the subscript for bromine, and I'm going to take this 1 and bring it down so it becomes the subscript for calcium. And what I get is calcium 1, right? This one comes and becomes a subscript for calcium, and Br 2. The 2 becomes a subscript for the bromine. This tells me the ratio between calcium and bromine. And when we write out the formula, we usually don't write ones. So we get CaBr2. OK, so let's try another one. Now, instead of looking at Ca and Br, let's look at Ca and S, sulfur. Using the same method, we see that Ca is still in group in group 2, plus 2, and sulfur is in group six, 16 and has a charge of minus 2. So we write out our ions with the charge Ca plus 2 and S minus 2, and then we use the crossing over method here. We take this charge for calcium and make it the subscript for S, and then we change, take the charge for sulfur and make, the, make it the subscript for Ca. And when we put that together, we get Ca2, right, Ca2 from here, and S2 from here. And so Ca2, S2 <clears throat> gives you the ratio of calcium to sulfur, but usually when we write formulas, we write them for ionic compounds, we give the empirical formula where the subscripts, if possible, are reduced um, to the lowest possible whole numbers. And so when we do reduction, we get CAS, which is the empirical formula. OK, so let's see uh, if we can do this. What ionic compound is formed from sodium and oxygen? Mm, Tessa? Nope. So the easiest way to do this is to write the actual elements. So sodium is Na with a charge positive 1 and oxygen has a charge of 2 minus. So to do this we have um, a kind of like crossover method. So we don't have to write the 1 but for now we're just going to write it. So when we write, when we combine these two we get this. And then the charges are going to cross over, so the 2 is going to go by Na, and the 1 is going to go by oxygen. But since it's a 1, you don't really have to write it. Um, so you can just... Uh, this is a better answer to that. Great. Okay, let's try another one. What uh, ionic compound is formed from barium and chlorine? How about you, Simon? Let's see, um, chlorine will have a negative charge, and then barium, I think, has a plus two. So if I were to do the crossing over like this, and take this and bring it here, I would get something like this. What do we think about that? I think you made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So not bad with the crossing over, but there is one problem here. So who wants to help uh, Simon out? Okay, I'll go ahead. Okay, so he has the ions correct. It's just that when you're uh, putting ionic compounds together, you put the positive charge ion first in the naming uh, the compound name, and then you put the negative one. So all we have to do is reverse this. And the crossing over is correct as well. The two goes to the chlorine. Just that the BA goes first, because it's a positive one. And then the CL with the two on the bottom goes last. Yeah. Okay, what do we think about that? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so let's just rewrite this over here. 
so people aren't confused. Right, the BA goes first, BA2 plus, and then the CL, there's a <coughs> pretend one there, so get the two goes down to the CL, and the one goes down to the BA. So get BA pretend one, CL2, BA CL2. Okay, now let's do a few more examples, and let's kick it up a notch, shall we? Let's look at the crossing over method using polyatomic ions. The principle with polyatomic ions is the same. In an ionic compound, the total charge of the formula must be zero. Now, when we're looking at polyatomics, we need to remember that the polyatomic ion, something like ammonium or nitrate, or sulfate, sulfate, these ions behave as a unit. We don't break them apart in any way. Sulfate remains a sulfate when we're using the crossing over method. So let's start with this first uh, question up here. What is the formula of an ionic compound composed of NH4 plus ammonium and brom bromide? Br minus. We'll do the same thing here. We have NH4 plus 1 and Br minus 1. And we do our crossing over. We bring the 1 from the ammonium to the bromide, brom, bromine and the 1 from the bromide down to the ammonium. We get NH4 1 Br1 or just NH4 Br. What about an ionic compound composed of ammonium and selenide derived from selenium? NH4 is still plus one and selenium is two minus. Well, we do the crossing over, we get plus one and, and we bring the one from the ammonium down to the selenium. We bring the two from the selenide down to the ammonium. And we get NH42 Se1, or Se. What we need to pay attention to is how we write the ammonium in this formula. Remember, the NH4 behaves as a unit. So we put the NH4 in parentheses and put the subscript 2 outside those parentheses thus indicating that we have two units of ammonium. What we don't do is double the subscript. What we don't get N2H8. We get NH4 parentheses two selenide. Okay, one more. What is the formula of an ionic compound composed of calcium plus two and phosphate three minus? Again, write out the ions with the charges, do our crossing over, and what we result in is calcium 3 phosphate 2. And just like the example ammonium selenide, we get calcium 3 and PO4 parentheses 2. Now to summarize what we covered in this lecture, first we learned how ions are formed and what some common ions are. We learned how to predict ionic charges using the periodic table. And finally, we learned how to use the crossing over method to determine the formulas of ionic compounds. I hope this lecture was enjoyable and informative, and thank you for watching.